Assalamu alaikum. Peace and blessings be upon you. In the name of God, the most gracious and the most merciful, all glory and praise belongs to God and salutating with salutations to the beloved and all the beloveds of God who include Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his holy family. Thank you so much for tuning into our sixth Divine Clinic Foundation podcast series called Healing is Believing. And our subject today of discussion is, what is a surety? I'm your host, QW. Joining me is my co-host, the delightful Imam Saab. Assalamu alaikum, Imam Saab. Welcome to the show, and how are you today? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much for, for hanging us on the show again. Uh, we're very, very blessed uh, and honored um, to be on the show yet again. Um, and just be able to sort of give deliberations on all these valid points that are just so needed today to be heard uh, and to be discussed upon also as well. Absolutely. And we're so grateful to have a phenomenal teacher to Mm -hmm. give us such inner wisdom and insight. And as we go into what is a surety. So from a healing perspective, um, we know our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is really not visible. And, but we do know that seeing is knowing and feeling is believing. And when we come back to the premise of our podcast being healing is believing when, when we talk about a surety and when it comes to matters of uh, spiritual healing, which is a, uh, a pure vessel and pure light helping humanity, it is quite phenomenal and not only that, but miraculous. And the assurity in how It is not like your conventional um, medicine or going to a doctor for a, you know, physical procedure, but the assurity knowing that when you are in the hands of the one that has perfected their faith and blessed with divine gifts of healing, the responsibility um, with that elevation also comes with a greater responsibility in terms of helping humanity. And so when we come back to a surety, it is so uh, wonderful to, to see from a healing perspective that um, also we go back into historical readings, knowing that um, those that have perfected their faith do get divine blessings. And as seen in Prophet Musa, and, and what the Divine Clinic Foundation here is to help all of humanity with all their um, energy blockages within them and to re- uh, revive uh, the soul to come back to its true essence. And you know it's true because it is that um, elevation that one feels and gets through the removal of the blockages it is a strong sense of feeling. And as we see from all of the other um, patients or callers that have, you know, turned into uh, uh, clients, have expressed this sense of renewal and this sense of enlightenment, this sense of um free from all negativity and lightness and peace. And when they are speaking that, that is their soul coming out and speaking the truth. And having explained um, from a healing perspective on a shorty, Ram Sahib, if you can kindly go ahead and reiterate um, your, your perspective on today's uh, podcast. Sure, uh, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. 
Well, uh, I mean, the first question is we have to ask, what is surety? Uh, a surety is uh, fundamentally the the concept of having a firm belief um, in in knowing or in you know in, in ascertaining that whatever is happening is happening and and that it's true and it's something that is not false now you know with many religions and many other different belief systems um, how one acquires a surety through spiritual means is either through spiritual visions, dreams, um, spiritual practices, um, which are all respective to their own individual um, doctrines. However, from what we understand from the classical teachings of the of the saints of the Audi Allah, is that we understand that a surety is something that, uh, from as a student under the guise of a, of a murshid, of, of his teacher, um, one has to go through a, a, a period of spiritual development. And that spiritual development is very, very important because it builds up the character of the student. And as, it, as they start to rise through the different ranks, um, more and more veils become unveiled for them. So there's an uplifting of the veils, which then therefore kind of relates also and correlates to the fact that you're being uplifted and enlightened. And with each, you know, milestone of enlightenment, uh, the student is also rewarded with many gifts from the teacher, through the teacher, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from, from the Lord and Master of all the worlds, you know. And it's important to understand from the healing perspective that, you know, when you're dealing with someone, especially when you're dealing with the human spirit, it's something that is a very, very sacred thing. And that when any uh, any type of healing process is applied to that spirit, it, you have to understand that there has to be a certain level of respect, a certain level of uh, understanding and and love and um, and also, I mean, the the greatest thing out of all this is respect, because without the respect, um, the the healing powers of that individual are very limited. So the respect factor has to be there. A surety doesn't just mean uh, being able to have spiritual vision. For example, we know that there are many blessed individuals who possess spiritual vision. Uh, but spiritual vision by itself is not something that is open to everyone. So therefore, then what other thing can constitute uh, a surety from that standpoint? Well, the next best thing would be to feel. And if you can feel something, then you know that you're sort of at least halfway there to gaining that surety. But it's through the healing that you see, the healing that way you get the 100% assurity because you know that you were feeling, you know, uh, on this level before, which is obviously usually quite negative. And then through the healing of a healing process by its very nature, it transforms that negative into something positive. So therefore, you know, you, you have, like you were saying, there's a feeling of lightness, a feeling of air, a feeling of peace, tranquility. So therefore, you know that a transition has occurred. So within that very process, that is the, the definition of surety within that. So when we look at the Quran and the Quran, in, in chapter 2 of the Quran, where uh, Allah so talks about uh, having a surety in belief, well, for someone who's possibly lived the majority of their adolescent and and, and maybe adult life in a very negative state with blockages and, you know, various other uh, negative ailments um, to be cleansed and healed and then to be placed on a sort of a, a pedestal of, of positivity. And when they're there, they can look back and, and relate to the fact of how they were feeling before. Because it's all to do with relativity, and Einstein as well in science, he talks about a theory of relativity. What is relativity? The relativity is the measure of one thing against another. So how do we measure time? 
time is relative. From an hour ago to an hour later, you see, it's it's all relative. So the the understanding through the healing is that you understand that you were feeling one way before, and after the healing process, you feel something else. And usually, that something else is always beneficial. It's always something that is uplifted. Um, the state of mind of that individual is also changed because the spiritual energy around that individual has changed. So it forces that individual into a higher state of, of, of awareness. I wouldn't say consciousness, but awareness, because consciousness, uh, again, has to go through the process of, you know, seeking the path, uh, taking that journey within, you know, taking those steps towards God, taking those steps towards the higher divine being, you know. Um, that's where that comes in. The consciousness part but the cleansing brings about an awareness that is very different uh, and very subtle and very beautiful than compared to say going to a a religious talk or listening to um, a particular religious seminar or something because that brings in a certain level of of awareness but the awareness in having awareness of your own body in feeling different and the, you know, being more aware of your surroundings as well. Because a lot of people, what they what they say, having gone through the cleanses, that they're able to interact with the environment in, in a much more direct way. Um, you know, and that feeling of freeness, uh, it just, it doesn't just, you know, end with the individual, but also relates to the environment as well. So, so, so you know, everything that they're looking at, everything that they're touching, you know, is is positive. But then it's important for them to understand how to maintain that. And that's where the sort of aftercare support, this, you know, that service is provided to ensure that the individual has the right tools and resources that they need in order to then carry on living a fulfilling life. Because that's what is important. Um, the whole reason why anyone would need healing at all is because that they would be in a negatively uh, negatively spiritual state, you know, and and as as we understand that many people are suffering this as a result of trauma, physical trauma, which is having an impact on the human spirit worldwide. You know, it's it's a it's a cancerous condition. It's happening across every single community, irrespective of race, color, creed, and religion. Yeah, that's really um, well explained there from the how to get to, you know, the the, mm. the ranks to get to a surety to, mm. you know, to how one is uh, blessed with it, the gifts that come along the way. Mm. And then taking that whole journey, the post, the cleanse, the post cleanse and recovery. And it's it is it is quite um it's really important that we um, explain to our um, our audience in terms of the the aftercare, and perhaps um, is that something that uh, you can elaborate on? Um, yes. The met methods of post um, care of cleanse, um, some information that can benefit them. So that they can, you know, know what the pro the process would be thereafter. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, as we as we were talking about a surety now, a surety uh, going through the cleanse even before uh, you know a person is due to be healed and go through the healing process, um, we have to undertake a a kind of a, a rigorous assessment. Um, in the sense of understanding the uh, the mental and spiritual capacity of that individual and where they are in that sort of negative space, where they are. Because what we have to do is then go and enter that negative space to pull them out of that. And so the, there is, it's almost like a rebirth. Um, I could probably best explain it like that. You know, they say that when you take Shahada, which is the declaration of faith in Islam, that when a person who embraces Islam for the first time 
at whatever age and takes that shahada and and becomes a Muslim, that they become a new person, you know, that they have a new lease on life, that everything is re- rewritten for them. Well, going through this cleanse is exactly the same thing, because what we're doing is we're taking people who are in a very negative state, um, and it's, it's not because of any fault of their own, but it's a result of their environment, a result of possibly uh, ancestral links as well. Because don't forget, when you're looking at science today, uh, it's revealing many, many things that, you know, the, the, the mystics of the past knew at their time, you know. Um, and it's only being revealed to, to us through modern science and, uh, you know, innovations within discoveries in science. For example, we understand that if the, the mom and, and, you know, the, the parents of a child, um, if both of them had the genes that, you know, were expressed for, say, leukemia um, or any other type of bloodborne illness, then there is a high probability and a high chance that they will, uh, you know, infect the child as well with the same gene or that gene would be dominant in that child, you know, because the parents are either carrying it or it's a dominant factor or a whether it's a dominant or recessive factor in the parents, the, the child, uh, you know, essentially becomes a recipient of that gene because it's linked to the parents by blood, by information. So, you know, in understanding that, you know, we we're talking about... Um, the aftercare service, well, the aftercare service actually starts right at the beginning, from the first time that we have a consultation. Um, again, we get to understand the, the current situation, um, especially within the spiritual mindset of that individual, where they are. Whether they have a belief or not, it doesn't make a difference uh, to them or to us, because this is about how they're feeling and understanding how they're feeling. And then being able to explain how they're feeling from the text that we have and also from the sunnah of the awliyaullah as well, which are the traditions of the awliyaullah, the sayings of the awliyaullah. And so this is really important factor that they also are exposed to that and understand exactly where it's come from. And in doing so, it brings an element of respect as well towards those who have helped bring that individual from the darkness into the light. That's um very you know valid point how the 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 post the the post treatment actually starts from the initial because of mm. the um, foundation that needs to be set to make them understand um, where the the healing is stemming from and what they can do to carry this on forward to live more of a purposeful life and um with um with this segment on a shorty um given to our time constraints Mm -hmm. i would like to wrap it up however if there's anything else that you would like to add so that our audience can um, have a better understanding or if there's anything else you'd like to elaborate on Please feel free, Imam Saab. Sure. Um, okay, well, I would just like to close on one thing, which is that, like, you know, God created all of us. Yeah? God created all of us. And he loves us all very much. Every single one of us. God loves us. That's the whole reason why he created us. And it's through this awakening by great spiritual teachers and masters that we recognize our purposes you know individually as to what we are and what we're here for and we're here essentially to serve the needs of others um and you know we're taught this by even just the if understanding the life of the holy prophet and his holy family um and his loyal companions you know in understanding in how they gave up their lives in in sacrifice for humanity uh, and these are great lessons. I mean, even when you look at the life of Buddha, you know, for example, you know, again, you know, serving humanity, you know, propagating peace. 
But with Islam, it brings a, uh, there's other dimensions in Islam which are probably not very much talked about. And that is more to do with the esoteric, the healing, um, especially with how we deal with demonic energy as well, because that is by far the strongest value of Islam as well, because it can eradicate all forms of negative energy very, very successfully above anything else. Um, and we've seen that within ourselves, within discussions with other communities as well. Um, and I just wanted to sort of point out as well that every single person who is listening, you know, they have been given a gift. Every single person has been given a gift. And that is the body in which they have. Because that body is an amazing machine. That body is able to heal itself. But you see, the problem at the moment is because of the uh, because of the sort of the poor attitudes towards looking after each other, looking after yourself, the poor conditions of of food and and everything else, you know, um, and sort of misguidance in a lot of areas of life and a lot of fear as well. This is affecting, you know, the, the human being at their very core. So therefore, that they're you know, if you look at it, their immune, their spirit or their spiritual energy is like an immune system. Yeah, it's like an immune system. And if that immune system is compromised by impurities and it's held there, then it will never, ever be able to reach a state of, uh, you know, homeostasis, uh, the, you know, the equal balancing of, of optimization. So that body is never able to fully be fully optimized because the spirit itself is in a state of distress. So, you know, um, all praise and, and glory be to God that we are able to help people to rebalance their spirit by removing the impurities and then going through the aftercare service as well, which, you know, includes there is, a, you know, counseling involved as well with regards to this. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is an added benefit to the individual because it opens up different intellectual thoughts as well. And, you know, the body starts to kind of re regenerate, you know, quite beautifully. And also, you know, we have uh, the added value as well in which when the teacher, you know, they get directly involved with patients, you know, that regeneration process happens a lot quicker because a higher energy source is being applied. So the recovery process is even quicker there as well. So, you know, I just wanted to sort of point that out to everyone that everyone has a responsibility to understand what he or she has been given. And it's their responsibility, nobody else's, you know, to to make sure that they, you know, they get a spiritual MOT done, you know, and find out if there are things affecting them or, you know, is there another reason for, uh, th that period of life that they're going through um, and and can they come out of it and the answer is yes they can but they just have to make that first step in admitting that there is a problem uh, admitting that there is an issue so with that hopefully that can bring everything to a close I hope that's answered any other questions that you probably have as well but uh, thank you for having us on the show and uh Look forward to the next podcast with you as well. QW. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you all for joining us today as well. Inshallah, next time we shall reconvene and look forward to um, spreading peace, love, and light. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam.